we doing? How we feeling? Uh, I told Tani, Kill Switch, Aki, Mar, uh, Say the Chain, Sister, uh, who else? Everybody, Sensei, D5, 40, David, Crypto, Rebel, and, you know, everybody else. How you guys doing? How you guys feeling? Uh, just like Totali said, it is a, another week in crypto. Uh, market hasn't been too great, but it hasn't been too bad also. But at the end of the day, you know, it's an exciting time, an exciting moment, exciting. It feels great to actually be a part of this amazing era, uh, this evolution. Uh, you know, it could have been anybody, but it is us. So every day I keep that in mind, right? And this is how I know we're going to win because... The competition is very low right now. While everybody else is going to be flooding in, they're going to be, I hate to say it, but that's the way it is. They, they're going to be all exit liquidity when they come in, right? And it's a simple way to think about it because that's how it was the last bull run. We were exit liquidity for the last group of people that got rich and, and ran away, right? <laughs> so I think this is how it is. Just like Totani always say, in order for there to be a winner, there has to be some losers. And we just have to actually remain in the space, hold the, the right project, keep educating ourselves, and we're bound to win in this space. We're bound to win because crypto is about to do ridiculous numbers. Uh, you know, I don't heard something about, I don't know if we're going to cover that or not. You guys might have heard about what they, they, they're talking about, about the rates. And I heard something about the economy is going to actually be up 50% more than was expected Uh you know, uh, December, something like that, right? So it's great things coming along the way. Uh, nothing bad except the fact that Ethereum is being investigated. But Toltani, you, I think you tweeted something earlier today that says that they're actually ensuring that this investigation may not be a bad thing, okay? Uh, it may be a good thing, but then I'll let Toltani uh, um, kind of get into as to why he said what he said. But the moment he said that, I actually get what he was what he meant uh, based on his perspective. But yeah, anyhow, guys, uh, go ahead, Kill Switch. Thank you, brother. I appreciate it. Yeah, no, I just wanted to give you the opportunity to go first. I know I'd be kind of stealing your thunder sometimes. And, you know, just don't Thank do you, that. bro. But, but, but you know what? It's fun. It's fun. <laughs> <laughs> no friendly competition. No, I, uh, I, I agree with what Bush Bert said, definitely, regarding the market. Um, I think we're going to see, you know, what we're seeing right now is kind of the market playing catch up, in my opinion, with what's been happening for so long, which is a lot of money being pumped in from, you know, big money sources very quickly. And I think it's just kind of trying to figure out where it's going to sit, where, you know, where those numbers are going to be that are, you know, the, the regular, um, you know, fallback points for, you know, different projects, and I think that right now we're, we're seeing kind of a baseline being formed, and uh, that's not a bad thing. So it's just a kind of period of what I would say of consolidation, um, and look very, very closely for explosive growth. Um, any, any good news right now is going to spur major economic growth in, in ways that, you know, we haven't seen in this industry before uh, there's so many new players involved that <clears throat> with the you know ethereum etfs looming um, they are going to happen ethereum is such a solid project that you know the the blockchain that's been built the ecosystem it's unmatched in my opinion i saw a, a, you know a tweet from zach Humphreys talking about how he would rather pay the $145 in gas than, you know, have 14 or 15 failures in a row on Solana. And I completely agree with that sentiment. And that might be because I'm, you know, biased a little bit to, uh, to Ethereum, I can admit that. But what I really think is going to happen here is that we're going to see explosive growth extremely quickly. And, you know, I'll be the first one to say that, uh, I was hesitant on memes this time around and recently with all the data and everything that's been shown, um, it just looks like to me that, you know, meme coins are performing the best. They're having great, great success and they're doing so while offering people 
you know, something that they genuinely connect to, something that they, you know, find um, comedy or, you know, uh, sincerity in, and just the, the straight up, you know, kind of approach that so many of, of the meme tokens take. And I, I really, I resonate with that. Um, there's been so many really good ideas in the space over the last, you know, last run especially. And, you know, a lot of those projects aren't here. They're very expensive. So I just find it interesting, you know, and I, I think that we really need to look at the market as a whole as we are all going to move forward. Everybody that's in here right now, like Mr. Bird said, you, you're you early. And you're going to, you know, when these new people come in, you're going to be using someone uh, you know, else is li exit liquidity, and that's not a bad thing because guess what? Their turn will come around too, um, and that's just how these projects work. When you get in early, you know you know what time it is to sell, and you know when you're in the right place, and you do so. And executing in this uh, industry, I'd say, is you know two thirds of getting stuff done. And so I think that we are on a path of clear success, and I think that you know crypto is only gonna expand grow obviously since companies like blackrock and vanguard have gotten in we all know that it's not going anywhere and uh yeah that what they will have more of a say and more control over the market but at the same time that ensures on the back end that that's never going to go away and that we're always going to be here so just really glad that we're in a position that we know that things are only going to go up and that people that are in this room right now consider yourselves early adopters Thank you, thank you, Mr. Killswitch and Mr. Bird. Uh, before I go, I'll let Mar go because he's got a hand up, and I do want to get to Aki as well. So go ahead, Mar. No, really quick. Uh, quick. Uh, uh, I wanted to share some of the positions that I got in and got out during this uh, correction. Uh, but first, uh, uh, yeah, they're, they're talking about this BlackRock thing, and I feel like, you know, maybe I'm just... Uh, overthinking it or just trying to find out the truth or you'll never know because the SEC, the SEC take, are going to take them to court to see if it's their security and at the same time the same week BlackRock announces that they invested what billions of dollars into uh, Ethereum's blockchain and also BlackRock said that they're you know the future is tokenizing you know stocks and stuff like that so I thought that was uh, you know from the CEO from BlackRock I think that's uh that's great news for for the crypto industry, and uh, and last thing, uh, uh, you know, my limit buys for our swing trade they triggered at uh, Bitcoin sixty two k, Ethereum uh, I put it at thirty one fifty, and Caspa at twelve uh, cents. Those are uh, those limit buys. They you know they, uh, they, you know I got in at those prices and they already sold. Mentally, how do I get into these? Uh, uh, how do I know when to sell? I, I, my plan was to make the exact money I make monthly for my job out of these swing trades, and it you know I did it. So that's one month of uh, free work at least for me, and that's how I you know call me crazy, but that's at least that's how my mind works on these swing trades, and uh, and I took those three positions doing this correction, and listen, anyone that gets nervous. We're in a bull market, period. And it hasn't even started yet. And these corrections are the best. I love them. This is when we make money, you know? That's the way you got to see it, you know? And uh, and understand the market and the, psych and the psychology behind it. I had a feeling, I was a little bit scared. Bitcoin, maybe 57, 58. But my alpha group were saying I'm a clown and an idiot by saying that. So I trusted them. I'm like, okay, I'll take this position at 62, you know? And it paid off. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mar. Aki, how are you doing on this Thursday? Hey, night? man, I'm doing great, man. You know, once again, grinding in real life and also in crypto. 
it's always great to hear, you know, more information concerning the markets. And, you know, I'm excited to see what's going on right now in crypto. You know, it's I haven't seen this before where Bitcoin has gone up really quick and then dropped down really quick. So that's new for me. You know, once again, I was in the latter half of the last bull cycle. Um, but it's great to see new liquidity pouring into the markets. And I wanted to kind of like talk a little bit more about what Kilsu said and also Mar. Uh, you know, I think that, you know, continuing our conversation over the past couple of days about meme coins that tends to come up more often, I think meme coins are going to unlock a new market uh, once they really start kicking off. Uh, and, you know, once again, this is going to be great. This is going to kind of reinvigorate, um, you know, the, I guess, the spirit of meme coins, you know, that we got from the big players in, in last a bull cycle, and you know, I, you know, as as we've talked about before, I definitely think that meme coins can continue to be a, a a a decent player in the crypto market, and they will unlock new skills uh, in terms of the ability of meme coins to uh, influence the globe, um, and you know, I'm I'm ready to you know be part of that. Like I definitely believe in meme coins because of the community. And, you know, I think this is one aspect of, you know, us being early adopters, as Killswitch said, um, uh, you know, we get to see the process unfold. And the other one is the tokenization of assets. I think that's really going to be, um, you know, a, a great thing to see in terms of reducing corruption, um, issues of ownership, uh, and the uh, reducing... Uh, the time needed to um, complete transactions and increase efficiency. You know, these things are going to be um, really sought after in the future, I believe. And, you know, it, it looks like BlackRock continues to have, not to say that they're the leaders in there, but they continue to take steps to um, kind of be ahead of the, the, the curve on who is... Um, kind of producing a power play in terms of who's going to make the first step, you know, with Bitcoin, and now it's going to be with tokenization of assets. Um, you know, these things, uh, you know, it's just a huge market, uh, assets in general. Uh, and, you know, to, to be such a big player in the space, they are, you know, kind of setting the, the, the tone per se. I mean, there's a lot of smaller companies out there doing this, but I would say that, you know, because they're saying it, they're kind of, kind of waking up people that aren't aware of the power of blockchain technology and what it can do. And <clears throat> hopefully, you know, the, the smaller companies have a little bit of a, uh, a leg up on uh, what is being done with these larger companies because I always support the entrepreneur uh, and I consider the smaller companies to be such. But, you know, it's great to be in a space where we can see uh, multiple avenues of innovation continuing to be opening up and, and there are different views on uh, you know how blockchain technology whether it be a meme coin or tokenization of assets that utility kind of come together uh, to create just another stronger asset class I couldn't agree more, brother. I think that you're spot on with, you know, with exactly with the tokenization of, uh, <clears throat> of, invest of investments and, you know, um, tokenization of everything, right? Tokenization of all of our assets, tokenization of um, so many other, other things, files, records. I think that that is really one industry that is going to be uh, an underappreciated and under... Uh, thought of, you know, what do I want to call it? Utility, I guess, is what I would say in this um, landscape. And I think that what's going to happen is, is it's going to spur major development and growth in that sector, which will trinkle, you know, switch over and transfer to the real world for the simple fact that, you know, uh, schools, colleges, uh, medical can all greatly, greatly um, benefit from having that type of technology to be able to um, 
you know, have certified, real certified copies of important documents that they need and also patient files, things like that, that they want to keep secure. Um, credit card companies, you think of the multiple multiple, you know, rings of uh, application for that and definitely uh, to see those type of companies get started on the blockchain will be absolutely amazing and I think it will happen. Um, what I think is really happening is a lot of people who were thinking about opening up, uh, you know, a corporation or an S-corp or whatever it may be uh, and running just a straight up in real life business. Um are starting to realize that there's such an advantage to operating in the crypto market that they are opening business that have, you know, real world implications, but they're doing it from a cryptocurrency standpoint. And a lot of that, I think, is to do with the fact that people are, no offense, you know, I don't, I don't I hope nobody gets mad at this, but people are losing faith in, in you know, paper money. And I think that's why a lot of us are here. And so, with that happening, that's giving people the that wouldn't necessarily have taken the the challenge on to come over and, and try to make it work, um, you know, on a on a blockchain are doing so because they see how intelligent and uh, you know how far blockchain technology can go. The scalability is you know really only stopped by the technology, and so as long as they're continuing to progress at a relative speed. Um, this is going to only grow to heights that you know, people right now in this phase, we can't even imagine. So especially with the innovations in AI, um, you know, AR, VR, um, all these different things that are definitely going to have a huge impact on our futures as well as, um, you know, cryptocurrency as a whole. So I think it's a really exciting time, as we say, to be alive and also a very exciting time to be in crypto and to be part of a new burgeoning industry that's really on the precipice of, uh, you know, going through and, and becoming the perennial asset to have, uh, in my personal opinion. Hundred hundred percent. I do want to obviously say shout out to Mutasco. I see in the building, Naji. Aeon, how you doing, Aeon? Nice to see you, brother. You know, Country Crypto's in the house. CRXO underscore 10. Mario, Matt Jams, Anton, Mustafa, Crypto Biz, Crypto Way Forward. We got Fat Swag, or Fat Money Swag, Joey Crypto, Franchise, Sida Afro, my brother Crypto Rello, 40 with the Souls. And a new face that I haven't seen, a new PTF. I see BTC Holder for Life. Got to give you a follow. I always try to follow everybody. Like I always say, your network is your net worth in this space. So definitely make sure you are following as many people as you can. I know some people have X or formerly Twitter Pride. Uh, I try to follow as many people that I can because I love to continue to expand and build my network. Because you never know who you'll truly meet in these spaces. Uh, when it comes down to it and how the information or that, that relationship could change the direction of your journey into cryptocurrency. But <clears throat> I do want to obviously get to our normal uh, short motivational video and then obviously we can touch over the, the market, Bitcoin, Ethereum, some of the other top uh, 100 meme coins and alts, and then obviously look into some of our favorite micro cap means and alts that are always highly represented right here in the space by many, many, many individuals that come in here and support us. So, I do got one pulled up here. Bear with me for one second. It's called Kill Your Excuses. Obviously, a short motivational video, but obviously, making sure. We are killing those excuses when they come up because we know a lot of times we can we can be the ones to talk ourselves out of almost anything uh, when it comes down to it. So hope everybody enjoys this. Just about just a little over three minutes. Uh, as always, definitely get some powerful messages out of these when we listen to them. And then obviously, like I said, 
we will go over the overall market, and then if anybody has, oh, excuse me, any of their own thoughts, I definitely would love to hear them. And then if anybody wants to come up and join us, whether you have some knowledge to share with us, insight, information, experience, uh, anything and everything. Maybe if you have some updates for your community or for your project that you're in. Uh, I've been very really busy, so I really have been stay with things. So if there's anything new with STC, if there's anything new with Volt, Pepe Community, Dogcoin, Ben, uh, Cider Realty, Squid Grow, the list goes on and on. So if there's anything, obviously you guys can bring and update me. I definitely would appreciate it as well. Uh, but none other. Here we go. Let's kill those excuses, y'all. What's stopping you? Are you too tired? Didn't get enough sleep? Don't have enough energy? Don't have enough time? Is that what's stopping you right now? Don't have enough money? Is that the thing? Or is the thing that's stopping you? You. Wake your ass up. Awaken the beast inside. It's game on. It's ghost season. It's time for you to take advantage of the access and the resources that you have in your country and your community. You got a problem with your life. You got a problem with your environment. Do something about it. If you want it, go get it. This is your chance. This is your shot. This is your moment. This is your time. This is your place. This is your opportunity. It's really hard to be led by your brother. But I'm not qualified. But I'm not good enough. But I'm not smart enough. But I didn't go to the right school. But I don't have enough money. But, 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 but. If you're ever going to step into your future, if you're ever going to step into your destiny, you're going to have to get over your butt. See, in life, you can go through life, you can come up with reasons or you can come up with results. You can come up with excuses or you can come up with achievements. You can go through life blaming or you can come up with solutions. The choice is in your hands. Satisfaction or despair? Do I just sit there and settle? No, I don't. I say enough's enough, man, and I'm going to make a change, and I'm going to keep going until I get it. You chase something that you believe you deserve until you get it. And it doesn't matter what happens to you. It doesn't matter how many times you get fired. It doesn't matter how many people don't believe in you. Just go until you get it. That's the point. Are you tired yet? Some of you need to get tired. You need to be tired of what's going on in your life. Be tired of your habits. Be tired of the actions that you're putting in every day. Get changed, man, or nothing changed. It's about executing regardless of your emotions. These test days, they test your fortitude, your endurance, your discipline, your grit, your dedication, your determination, your mental toughness. At the very moment, when everything in you wants to do absolutely nothing, you got to get the job done. Stop having dialogue with your emotions. Stop negotiating with your feelings and start to act. That's where people separate themselves from the pack. That's where people earn the right to success. They earn the money. They earn the life. They earn the relationships. They earn the body in those little moments where they don't want to do what they need to do but move forward regardless of how they feel. No more excuses. No more I'll start tomorrow. No more just this once. No more accepting the short fault of my own will. No more taking the easy road. No more waiting for the perfect moment. And no more indecision. And no more lies. While the rest of the world is sleeping. Well. I think we got the message that no matter what it is, no more excuses, right? <laughs> no, but uh, I think that's definitely a good, um, a good video. You know, I've listened to it a couple times, but like I was saying before we, we got to play it, a lot of times we are our own worst enemies uh, in a lot of different ways in and through life. Uh, and we can, a lot of times we are the biggest obstacle to get over and to get through 
uh, in order to achieve a lot of our our goals that we have set, uh, as well as we always are the ones that always can make the excuses of why not to do it now, why not do it today, you know, uh, and on and on. But I think it's definitely a good, a good short motivation video to listen to because I know that we could probably at some point in our lives all relate to when we have made excuses uh, for ourselves or for things. Um, and a lot of times, you know, even personally myself, it has been me not wanting to, not as of recently, but years ago, years ago, especially when I was younger. Uh, I never wanted to accept the responsibility, so it was always easier to try to put it out on somebody else or have an excuse for my actions. Instead of just owning up to it, uh, I was always looking for that excuse of why. Uh, <laughs> But I've, I've 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 had that too, and when it comes to, you know, the last half decade in crypto as well, uh, there's many times that, even as motivated I can be at times, uh, as disciplined and as determined, sometimes I have to, to fight excuses that I try to make up for why I don't need to do this right now, or it can it's not as important, uh, and definitely definitely procrastination can be. One of my worst enemies sometimes, uh, especially when I have so much going on, uh, sometimes I just, you know, I forget that I do have good people around me that I could ask for help. Sometimes I forget, and then when somebody mentions something or asks about something I'm supposed to do, uh, <laughs> I, 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 I'm always quick to always have an excuse, but... If anybody has any feelings on obviously what you just heard or any relate, definitely, definitely love to hear what everybody has to say about it. Go ahead, Kill Switch. Yeah, I mean, I think um, excuses are something that we all use, I think, at times as kind of a coping mechanism to make ourselves feel better. Obviously, it can hurt other people as well, but I think excuses really, at the most, at the end of the day, traditionally, from my experience, it's, you know, within yourself trying to compensate or cover for something that you've done. Um, and at the end of the day, I think, <clears throat> you know, if you're honest with yourself, you, you start to see patterns. And I think the one way that you know, you try to fix that is by interrupting that pattern and by trying to implement a different um, mindset. And I think that as somebody who's known you for a very long time, I think that uh, your direction and your uh, ability to, uh, I want to, I'll say laser focus because it's, you know, for lack of a better term that I have in my head, but the ability that you've had to hyper laser focus on what you've needed to while not letting the other, as you mentioned, responsibilities that you do have fall at the wayside, um, you know, that's something to be proud of. And that's called, you know, maturing and, and getting older and, you know, learning from mistakes and excuses in the past. And I think that, you know, we all go through these ebbs and flows in life, right, where we're up, we're down, we're up, we're down, and it, it doesn't have to be necessarily be a monetary thing, it can be a, a, a mental roller coaster, and so always trying to stay level-headed and uh, make decisions and choices from a place of, you know, the best wisdom you can, I think is integral to being able to be successful in the long term and not have to make excuses because if you're being deliberate in your actions and you know that you're doing it with the uh, you know on it most honest of intentions and that you have a pure heart um, you shouldn't have to make excuses for what you do so I think that things a lot of things as you get older you realize you just have to take your time slow down and you know as I know my grandparents and parents told me if you're going to do something right, do it right the first time 
and I'll be the first one to say I don't always do that, but I'll definitely try, and I have, you know, over the years as I've gotten older, tried to be more and more consistent, which I think is a, uh, you know, a great a great trait to have when you're trying to be someone that moves with the same consistency and the same uh, respectability on a daily basis. Um, can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay, so I'm going to tell you guys this, right? Let me try to attempt to decipher this. All right. We're going through a mental warfare, emotional warfare. The war that we are currently fighting is not the war that our grandparents or great-grandparents had to fight. It's mental and emotional. It's not that we don't have reasons to have excuses. We have many reasons as to why we should have excuses. And actually, we do, right? But we cannot let ourselves fall into uh, that mindset. Why? Because it doesn't give us the power that we need to fight against the forces that are fighting against us. It's mental. The brain don't know, you know, you see, we, we talk about negativity. There's a certain things that the brain, if you tell the brain, if you tell yourself this, this, and that, whether it's negative or positive, it's going to register. So it doesn't know the aspects of right from wrong. If we talk about subconsciously, it doesn't know, right? And this is why you don't just tell a kid, don't do that. Instead, tell them what to do instead. Um, you know, it, it, it's within this reality, we have many different realities, which is based on individual perspective. We know of this reality, which is the whirlwind. But each individual have their own reality. But your reality is created based on your mindset, based on how you think, how you see things, how you feel about the things that you, you encounter and everything, right? You have your own reality. Do not ever think to yourself that your reality is the same as anybody else's. Your perspective is different than anybody else's perspective. You have the power to actually create you have the power to create your own reality we know this now we know this uh your mindset your way of thinking is very important so no excuses meaning that i'm not accepting defeat i'm not accepting the fact that yeah i know this happened because it is but how can i overcome this it's not the fact that well you know damn i i i'm like this because of this but how can i overcome that right it's the same way for us to being in crypto right now. If you are about these charts, if you are about every project you get in and you thinking they're going to rug, you thinking, my goodness, I hope I don't lose this money. I guarantee you this is exactly what's going to happen. You lose $50, take that L. Learn from it. You lose $100, take that L. Learn from it. Stay in the space. Keep educating yourself. With every loss, it comes, comes education. So with every loss, there's a win. It all depends on how you look at it. Are you warm about the $50 you lost, the $100, the $1,000 you, you lost? Or are you really focusing on the uh, lesson that you learned from that loss? That lesson is much more valuable than that $1,000 that you lost. But it all depends on how you look at it, right? That's how life is. It's based on perspective. Perspective creates your own reality, your own personal reality. And we have to understand that we have the power. The power is based on how, you, how we think and how we feel. Create your own reality. You have that. You want to be rich in crypto? Well, believe in it with all your soul, with all your might. Believe that you were meant to be here. And you were meant to be here. It's logical. Why are you here? 5% and you one of them? Why? Okay? You are bound. You were meant to be great. You were meant to be in the position that you think that you want to be. A lot of people say, well, I want to be successful. I want to be able to say, I have $10 million dollars. The only reason why you were able to say that and think that way is because that reality have already been set out for you. It's just you need to just believe it. Because if you wasn't if you didn't belong in that position, you would have never thought that way. So basically everything that you was you want has already been in your path. You just don't believe it yet because of how we've been programmed. Deprogram yourself, reprogram yourself, believe in yourself. Everybody around you can, they, they may not believe. That's their business. 
But the worst thing you could do is for you not to believe in your own self, good or bad. Mistakes or no mistakes. Believe in yourself. And keep on at it. And I guarantee you, it's going to pay off. Science says it. So, yeah. Thank you, Mr. Burke. Go ahead, Mark. Yeah, I just want to say something real quick. Uh, I I like to open up myself to uh, uh, when it comes to motivating people from my experience. Um, you know, I'm successful in, in I've been successful in crypto, especially the last uh, year, where I've I've been able to expand uh, my dream basically. And you've always you always hear the saying, "If I could do it." You could do it. But I'm not just going to say that. I'm going to say why I feel that if I could do it, you could do it. Uh, I always consider myself a loser in school because I tried, but I just couldn't get the grades. I just couldn't concentrate. I was a C minus, D plus. Uh, if you're from the U.S., you understand these grades are not the best. So that gave me a, a low self-esteem coming, in, you know, growing up. Uh, always when I was young, I've always had uh, anxiety issues. I suffer from uh, claustrophobic. And let me tell you something. It's incredible when you love something and you really fall in love with something, how at first it was hard. But once you love something, you know, anxiety could kick in, but not so much in a bad way. And a few people try to bring me down. Oh, man. If you suffer from fucking anxiety attacks and shit, the last thing you want to be is invest in the stock market, especially in crypto. That shit's wild. It's a, like this guy said, it's a roller coaster ride. But I, 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 I love the way it just, the way it was where I, you know, I, I don't want to say I forced myself, but I came into the moment. I didn't fall into the past, the future. I said, I want to learn this. And that is why I'm telling you, man, and people, if I could do it, you could do it. Because there's nothing worse than having freaking chronic anxiety and being involved in crypto. <laughs> and I was able to beat that. And, uh, and and I'm telling you, man, and that's why I always tell people, man, if I could do it, oh, but you're smart. No, D, I was a D student, you know, in the United States. And uh, have anxiety. And uh, you don't get nervous? And I go, yeah, fuck yeah. My hands used to fucking sweat when I was going to a $5 trade, having a hundred grand in my fucking bank account. Like, you're, you're nervous for five bucks? Yeah. But I wasn't nervous to lose the five bucks. I was nervous because I didn't want to lose. I wanted to be successful at it. I'm like, wait, I got to change my mentality. And hey, it took me some time, but I... Uh, I did it, and I did it right, and man, if, if, if I got through that, you know, it's, uh, and I'm going to tell you, man, and I'm going to open up myself, I could be a millionaire, I got to take drugs to get on a plane, I got to take drugs to ride a fucking elevator that's at least over four or five uh, floors to go up, because anxiety, but I don't give a shit. If I, 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 I don't give a shit if I don't beat that anxiety. I don't give a shit if I don't have, I, I, you know, I, I don't care about not getting on a plane. Yeah, I want to one day fly to Dubai and shit like that, but I did care about beating the anxiety when it came to crypto and the stock market because that's what I wanted to do. And at 32, I finally found my passion, you know. So at 32, <laughs> I'm blind to you. At 32, I got my shit together, but... Oh, my 40, man. At 40 years old, I finally found my fucking passion, bro. Some people, art, music, whatever it is, entertainment. But at least I found it, man. And it's crypto, and I love uh, everything. And I hope, uh, you know, some things change in a better way. But I, I hope a lot of things stay together the way, it is, especially uh, the community. So, yeah, man, if I did it, <laughs> anybody could, could be a, a successful investor in crypto, the stock market, or whatever it is, business, whatever it is, man, you could do it. Hey, Mark, can I ask you a question? Yeah. Yeah, now, go ahead. I, you know, I think it's awesome that you found crypto and it's helped you with your anxiety. 
I'm just curious, what about crypto did you fall in love with? Like, what do you love so much about it? Is, is it just the price action? I'm hoping it's more than that, but I'm Bro, curious. I, you know, I just learned what it, what, what it, what it means for, you know, like my dad always said, don't put your money in the bank. I'm like, where do I keep it? Put it in a safe. Uh, my dad was always like, the government doesn't need to know any, everything you have, which at the end of probably will, you know. Uh, the, uh, look, I'm not going to bullshit you. The price mo movement, the, uh, it's a roller coaster ride. It just, you know, it pumps me, you know. Um, the community, a uh, but but the community, man, uh, where 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 it trip, where it was the most dangerous, is the shit I fell in love with, like X. But at that time, it was more like Telegram, being engaged with people, you know. Oh shit, you know, I'm talking about the project for fucking hours, <laughs> and at the end, getting rugged. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Crying like but, little bitches, so, you know? So, yeah, I mean, so it sounds like at least part of you is in love with crypto because of the, like, self-sovereignty, right? The the way yeah. it allows you to, yeah, not have to have the government see everything you own, and, like, it gives us an opportunity to have something different, right? Yeah, yeah. The blockchain, how you can move things yeah. around, those are the little things that got me like, oh my God, I remember my first transaction, this shit's not going to work, what the fuck, copying like 30 times, pasting it, going back, making sure it was yeah. fine, <laughs> now, I, the, now I do it while I'm driving, <laughs> you know? But, so yeah, the UX is definitely, you know, could, could be yeah. improved upon, but... Yeah. Also, yeah, I mean, trade trading... I, I, yeah. Yeah, like for me, is he rugging? American exchanges? No, oh, I'm not. I guess I'm not I'm rugging. rugging. Hello? I guess I'm rugging. Yeah, talk. you you're cutting out. I th can you? Yeah, I can hear you now. Yeah, but so. Like the project I'm really into, it's a it's a fork of Bitcoin Cash, which is a fork of Bitcoin. So I know it's a fork of a fork, so it sounds kind of ridiculous, but I I really like what they're doing. I think they're focused on the right thing. It's called eCash, and I would love you know I hope that more Americans can find out about it. But you know for some reason like Coinbase, Kraken, they won't give their customers their eCash. Like, if you held BCH on their exchange as a, a certain date when the fork happened, you know, you should get the other side of the fork. But for whatever reason, no American exchange has decided to do that. But yeah, I love crypto for a lot of things. But, yeah, I love crypto for being, like, a new form of money, right? Like, I want a crypto that works, that has low transaction fees, that's super fast, you know, where it feels like magic, you know, like... Magic internet money. That's what they called it when I first got into crypto, but it doesn't... I feel like there's a lot of coins out there that don't feel magical when you use it. So that's what I'm looking for. I'm hoping that crypto eventually grows up. And and the meme coins, you know, I have nothing against the meme coins, the NFTs, none of that. But I'm just looking for, like, digital cash. Uh, yeah, and, and, and let me tell you, man, and no bullshit, at one time, I was down $80,000 in crypto. Yeah, I was down yeah. and I still loved it. That's how much I fucking loved it. That I was losing no, money no. and I still loved it. Okay, so <laughs> I'll I'll tell you a little bit of my stuff. So I first bought my first Bitcoin in July, mid July, twenty seventeen. So that's right before the first Bitcoin fork. You know, Bitcoin Cash. I don't know how, when did you first get into crypto. Uh, I started uh, reading about it back in two thousand eighteen, but they didn't really get into it until like two thousand nineteen. 2020 okay. but not much not no, much better, yeah. not much no, no, no. I, I started getting yeah, I mean, heavy heavy towards uh 21 uh and i was up big time and yeah. then you know i didn't know how to take profit that the, the, this is why this space uh is so amazing we're trying to tell people always teach people hey about taking profit you know <clears throat> yeah that's i think that's exactly so you got in big heavy in 2021 because of the bull run you, you get the fomo and same for me I got, I bought my first Bitcoin in 2017, July, and then as the price started, you know, you get more formal, you start buying shit at the top, but then everything crashed, 
and I was down a lot because uh, at the time, so like I said, I bought my first Bitcoin in July, right before the Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash hard fork. Do you know what that is? The split, the big yeah. blockers against yeah. the small blockers. Yeah. So I bought my coin right before that happened. And like, I, I, I didn't know anything about Bitcoin, how it worked. But then they kept talking about, oh, the hard fork is coming, you know? And if you want your, you know, free Bitcoin Cash airdrop coins, you need to have your own private keys. So I had to learn about, like, how to create a wallet, withdraw my coins. And so, you know, I, I split my Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, and went through this whole process. And I fell down this rabbit hole where, like, I was like, oh, do I have to choose between the big blockers or the small blockers and all this crazy stuff? But, yeah, in 2018, I was down like you, yeah, I was down like 80,000, maybe 100,000. I was down a lot. And uh, I started regretting everything I had done. But then I still believed, I don't know, I had this faith that it wasn't, this wasn't like a Ponzi scheme, that crypto was real. And luckily I stuck around and, you know, made my money back. And yeah, it's allowed me to improve my life. You know, I was able to move my family to a much better, you know, area, much better city. Yeah, I, it was amazing. And I, just hope, I just hope that people see it for more than number. Go up. Nothing wrong with number go up. I got into it for number go up. I think so much people don't just see it as, oh, it's, it's just gambling, you know, just buying low and selling high. There's a lot more to crypto. And I'm hoping that we kind of change the narrative a little bit. You know, 2024... So in 2017, that was the craziest year. Like, that's when I got in. But ever since then, it's been seven years. No year has been as crazy as 2017. Everyone I knew was talking about crypto. Every party I went to, people were talking about crypto. So many people were asking me. 2021 wasn't like that. So I'm hoping 2024... It's like 2017, except crypto actually works. And so you people are like, wow, this shit's dope. Like, it's fast. It's cheap. Cheap. You know, I don't want people to come in and be like $50 to send a transaction, you know? Wow. No, there's a there's an ICO that I got in back in 2021. Uh I got got wrecked, bro. I got wrecked. Exactly. I don't want people people to experience that. No, but but listen, and I'm like the, they kept building, and I'm like the the biggest wreck I had was so far is Crow, Crypto dot com, but uh, other oh. than that one, this one wrecked me like holy shit. My thing went down to like ninety eight, ninety seven percent what I invested, but I said, man, these guys are building. These guys are still around. I'm like, fuck. What, which shit. one is this? It's a it's a physical NFT. It's a physical uh, NFT, okay. NFT uh, place, and uh, and I'm like, man, I these people, you know, they're they're they're, they're still like, they're still building, man. Like these guys, it's been so, like I realized, like I realized, like it's been two years. The project has been through the bear market. Something's got to give, man. You know what I'm saying? So what are they? What are they building though? They just sell real art. Through uh, the blockchain, like, like but physical you, art. You're buying an NF, so you're buying an NFT of an actual. Yeah, art, but they, they have their own tokens. Yeah, it? yeah. And, so, and uh, and uh, bro, I was down. Look, I'm not gonna bullshit you. Twenty G's, my twenty G's were down to eight hundred bucks, bro. That's how bad it was. You know what I'm saying? I'm yeah, like, you know what? Like I made some money. I'm like, fuck this. These people have been around for for two years. They're still, you know, they're not going to rock, man. These people, so, and uh, I ended up... So I, is it 800 now, or is it back up? No, there? no, wait. I, uh, I DC8, uh-huh. and uh, just uh-huh. the last 10 days, bro, it hit 180K, bro. Oh, shit, yeah. <laughs> so I would, I would take some profit. No, 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 no. Oh, Cash fuck out. yeah. Oh, those 20 grand uh, plus is in my fucking pockets uh, already, bro. Yeah, I, I'm yeah. glad it worked out yeah. for you. I'm glad but it worked that's crypto, but they kept building. And that's uh, a nice that I already got out of me. All right? You know, I've had all the rugs, $2,000, $3,000, $5,000, oh, yeah. those, whatever. It is what it is. So that's a nice. And the only one left in there, it's Crow. And I know Crow, it's going to, uh, 
you got to give it time, you know. I, I cross got to, something's got to give yeah, for the marketing, you, you know. I don't use, I don't use an exchange. Yeah. And comes another one where yeah. it's an American exchange and they don't list XCC. So, like, for me, since you're talking your book, I guess I can mention, you know, XCC is the, the fork of Bitcoin Cash that I mentioned. Oh, okay. I really wish an American exchange would list, because, so I remember back in 2017 when uh, Coinbase listed Bitcoin Cash. It was a big deal. Back then, Coinbase only listed three coins, BTC, ETH, and Litecoin. And then late 2017, they listed BCH. It was the first, you know, first new coin in a while. And you know, back then, they didn't have 50 coins or 100 coins. And it broke Coinbase, you know, like it froze everything because the price like skyrocketed. I think on coin it was like eight thousand dollars a coin. Now BCH is like four hundred dollars, right? But I think if they listed XCC, I think you know it's not going to be the same. The market's different; it's evolved since twenty seventeen. But I think it could be, it could do really well. I think a lot of Americans would like having access to purchase XCC. I think it could increase the price, but I don't know why they won't list it. So. That's why I'm going on spaces like this. I'm going to start, I guess, trying to advocate for XCC on American exchanges. I even went to the Stand with Crypto event. Did you hear about that at all? Did you see that online? No, 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 no. No? no. There was an event about a month ago. Brian Armstrong hosted Nas performed. It was in Hollywood. Probably about 500 people in attendance. Like, to It was a, oh, what's his name? For the bass guy, Jesse Pollock was there. He was like the MC, and it was a really cool event. You know, it was trying to get people to come out to support like crypto politicians who are you know favorable to crypto. Um, it was so you know the next day was Super Tuesday. You, you're supposed to go vote, which I did, and yeah, I was there because I, I want to advocate. You know, I want to try to get people to hear about XCC and see that it's a real like you said these guys have been building they've been building something amazing like i don't think people out there realize like what these guys are doing like so they took nakamoto consensus i don't know if you know what that is that's the consensus mechanism that bitcoin is based on you know the proof of work mechanism and then they put layered on top of that what's known as avalanche consensus which is you know the avax oh sorry the avax coin is uh based on right? it's a open source protocol just like uh you know nakamoto consensus there's a there's a white paper and everything so they combine the two to make their network like more secure faster you know more scalable more extensible like i know i must, I must sound like a crazy person but like i think what they're doing is amazing and i just wish more people knew so you know, I'm. I guess I'm just going to be an eCash evangelist and try to try to explain more. I don't. I don't know. Let me know if I'm talking too much. There's a there's a, a guy that follows eCash. Uh, he's spoken about it before. His name is Alex O. He's um he's from Mexico. He's uh Alex O. Yeah. Uh -huh. He's uh after Block Six. He's probably the smartest individual and uh, also uh, Modasco. No disrespect. One of the smartest individuals that I freaking met in this space. Uh, he's a uh, uh, Alex. So he he follows our uh, eCash, and I think he's block block six. He said, "Yeah, block." What do you mean by block? Block six is an individual on uh, X called Block Six. I'm looking up right now. Uh, he's got yeah. two X uh, accounts. He's uh, uh -huh. he's hard to speak to sometimes. Like not like like uh, like in a way of you know getting in touch with him. Like well, he's hard to get in touch. But when he uh, when you speak to him in a space. You better know your shit, and if you don't know, don't say it. Cause he'll like the guy. Yeah, the guy is already you... retired. He's a Bitcoiner uh -huh. from 2011. He's already retired. Uh -huh. He owned like mines and all that stuff. He's a full stack engineer, and uh, and the guy he's uh, he's already retired. He got so bored that he decided to study law from home for oh, to uh -huh. no to defend yeah. crypto That's... in the future. Yeah. He's finding all that the loopholes crazy. and everything. Yeah, can you tag, like, I don't know, if you could tag me his yeah. handle, that would be great. I would love to look, I try to look him up, but 
There's a block six. I don't know if that's the right account. Has, how many followers does it have? Or he yeah, has like I think one has like seventeen thousand. The other one like fifty thousand. Okay, so I don't, I don't know. Yeah, the one I saw was like a few hundred. So that's not him. So, uh, if I may, uh, yeah, yeah. eCash. I've heard about eCash. I don't know when, but I've heard oh, about really? it. I came across it uh, on on actually on X. I don't know if it was a few months ago, maybe a year ago, but I I, I remember eCash. Oh uh, yeah, about about a month ago, it like pumped like a hundred fifty yeah. percent in like a day. So yeah, you might have heard well, of it then. When we talk about listing, and I think this is a conversation that is not covered and they don't talk about enough, right? Mm -hmm. People, you know, we talk yeah. about when we in this uh, telegram chat, when listing, when this, when that, and yeah, people, yeah. people yeah. fail to realize that what does it take to get listed on these exchanges, especially top tier exchanges. First and foremost, it requires a lot of money. And second, Maybe yeah. they'll buy the product, they'll buy it and list it for free because they know they, there's a lot of value. Totani could correct me if I'm wrong. Kill Switch could correct me if I'm wrong. But it's all about money. If they came up, if it, you may have the greatest project ever. If the exchange is... Which I think e -cash yeah, is. Yeah, yeah but what but, but I'm saying, if the exchange is not looking at... If they don't see any money, they don't see how they could make yeah. money. There's no volume. It's like, what's no, the point? And I get it. A lot of yeah, they require listing fees, or they want like a bunch of free tokens so they can you know profit. But what they don't realize is, if they did their work, if these guys are like technically capable, they have their customers XEC from before the fork. Like you know, they should have it. They should have probably trillions of it, <laughs> trillions of XEC sitting on these exchanges in their like cold storage. All they would need to do is split the coins, give it to their customers that held BCH at the time of the fork, you know, the exact amount they're, they're supposed to get. And then you would have in immediate liquidity. You know, people could buy, sell, like, they, they make a decent amount in fees, I think. It would be a pretty popular listing. But I don't know why they don't do it. That's why, that's why I went to that event. I thought maybe I'll get to talk to Brian Armstrong. I, mean, I can, you know, I even wrote him an open letter on X before. But of course, you know, the, the event was much bigger than I thought it would be. I was like, as soon as I got there, I'm obviously not, not going to get to talk to Brian Armstrong, but it was a cool event. It was really cool. I wish you guys saw online some of the like pictures and videos people posted, but it was cool to be in a room full of like 500 people who are really into crypto. All different ages, you know, mostly male, <laughs> but you know, there were some females there too. It was, it was a cool event, you know. Most people came dressed nice. It was like, yeah, I was surprised. It was on Monday at three p.m., so I wasn't expecting a lot of people there, but it was pretty packed. So, Kane, let me ask you: Is eCash was it formerly Bitcoin Cash? So, yeah, uh, thank you for asking, because uh, so Bitcoin Cash was created by. Bitcoin ABC, which was founded by this guy named Omri Sachet. He goes by Dedelnix on X. He started it with Jian Wu um, and Hypo Yang. Like, they sponsored him, you know, gave him money to, like, build this thing. They released it on August 1, 2017, so that we could have, like, a big block version of Bitcoin. That was the hypothesis. No Lightning Network. We just need to raise the block size to get more transaction throughput. And, you know, we'll scale the chain that way. But then, in cash, the community had all kinds of problems. You know, BCH, the price kept going down. There, were, there was all this drama. And eventually, Omri and Bitcoin ABC were like, F this. We're going to uh, fork the code again. And we're going to include something called the IFP. So, you know, right now, all 100% of the block reward for all the Bitcoin forks goes directly to the mine, only the miners. But in eCash, what they decided to do, what Bitcoin ABC decided to do was we're going to write code so that 8% of the block reward is going to go to a, an address that we control. And this is going to be used to pay for like infrastructure and development because there was no money, right? They were trying to get sponsorships where people like Roger Ver wouldn't, you know, 
the whales, BCH whales, refused to donate to them. Like, and they weren't asking for a lot. You know, and the sponsor, you know, they already had one sponsor, but that wasn't enough. So they decided, you know, the only way out of this, after a lot of drama, a lot of infighting, was to fork the code, and we're going to introduce this IFP infrastructure funding plan so that they could support themselves and they could continue working on the project. And that's how XCC was born. But for whatever reason, and, you know, it almost died, right? There was so little hash power, mining power supporting XCC because it uses the same SHA-256, you know, mining algorithm. So it's easily, it could be easily 51% attack because it's such a minority chain. But then these guys were, you know, they came up with Avalanche. They have this, like, Avalanche post assist mechanism that, that makes it so you can't 51% attack the chain no matter how much hash power you have. So... Because they introduced this proof of stake element. So, yeah, as of the November upgrade, they introduced proof of stake rewards on eCash. So, first, imagine if Bitcoin, you know, now only the miners, you know, they can earn the block reward from mining, but mining is like a huge deal now. You have to be super rich. You have to have all kind. you know, you have to have a warehouse full of these ASICs. So, normal people, like, you know, we can't mine really. But you can, if, imagine if you could stake on it, you know, you provide uh, the civil resistance mechanism for the avalanche consensus, and you get rewarded. And right now, the yield is about fourteen percent. Um, for and the minimum is you have to uh, stake a hundred million XEC, which is really the equivalent of like of like one hundred CH, because uh, XEC also re-denominated. They moved the decimal point so that. You know, like Bitcoin, it's 100 million Satoshis is one Bitcoin. So you see one dot and then like eight zeros or something, right? But then eCash, what they did when they created eCash is move the decimal point over six places so that 100 Satoshis is one XEC. So that's why the total supply is 21 trillion XEC versus 21 million BTC or BCH. They, they re-denominated by a million. A factor of a million. Yeah, I, I was just looking at it. I see that it broke into the, yeah. it broke into the top one hundred. So, yeah, I mean, at point um, in twenty twenty one, it was like in the top thirty. Like it just spiked like one like you know one month, and it's just been kind of down yeah. only consolidating. And these guys have just been like like Mars was saying. These guys have been really building, but they've been building the future money of the world kind of thing. You know, it's not an NFT project. No no disrespect to NFT projects, mean token, none of that. You know, I think it's permissionless. Everyone should be able to do whatever they want. But what these guys are building, I think, is on another level. They've been, I, they're a small team. They've been at it, though, for a long time. These guys are dedicated. The The guy I mentioned, Omri Sache, he worked at Facebook for four years. So he's like, he knows how this stuff works, except, you know, he's not someone that likes to self-promote, and he, he's not about that. He's kind of stepped back from the project a little bit, but he's the fact, he, his vision is kind of what we're following, his roadmap on how to scale. So like, their goal is to reach 5 million transactions per second, which is, you know, roughly like 50 transactions per day for 10 billion people on the planet. So that's their goal. That's their, like, the mission. But yeah, I don't know. I don't want to like hog the space. No problem. But yeah, thanks. Thanks for listening, man. Thanks for uh, asking about. Yeah, if you guys have any other questions about eCash, feel free to ask. I could talk about eCash all day. That's why I joined the space. I guess. No, no problem.